Good day everyone. October the 2nd and the 3rd is not the new moon. The full moon is not the new moon. Many of my viewers uh, come into belief now that that 2nd October the full moon is the new moon. That is not the case. That is an error. And you cannot add to the word. And that is a fact. And in a moment I am going to let Chazwan, Chazwan come on and let him explain. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. We still uh, in the six month people. And if you truly really listen to uh, Dana, Dana Cutherstone's uh, dream, and especially the one about September the second, the second dream. And now um, he he stood on that calendar, and God called September to be a solemn assembly. And normally, a lul, a lul is normally that a month where the Jews coming together and seek the Lord's face in repentance uh, for the coming new year. So I believe that we are still in the six, uh, the, the, the six month. We, the seventh month did not appear because Jesus must fulfill Feast of Trumpets this coming year. It cannot be next year, people. I fully believe there is another uh, person, K. Uh, uh, v, the King, v, the King Vijay uh, Temple. Uh, that is his uh, nickname that he used, a Vata name that he used. So um, it's him and myself, we, we believe that the, and I did say so in the 4th of February, and I should have stick to that. But nevertheless, um, the 17th October will be the beginning of the, of the seventh uh, month. I'm going to include that video for you so that you can see it yourself. But there's one particular sign that I want to bring to you, uh, and that is the Venus. I checked the record of all uh, the... Uh, I went through the Stellarium, especially from the time when Jesus was born. And Venus always appear first before any, uh, uh, before any feast, trump, feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah is being announced. So Venus always appear first. But in this scenario, Venus only appeared the 3rd of October uh, with Regulus. And now they say this sign is a sign of the coming of Jesus. Yes, it is a sign of Jesus, but not on the 3rd of October. Uh, this always precedes, precedes uh, a Feast of Trumpets. Always. Yeah, so the Venus conjunction with uh, Regulus always comes before Feast of Trumpets. 20 September Feast of Trumpets is incorrect, I believe. And uh, I must go listen to that video again. I give you the proof that it is wrong. So uh, do listen to uh, Chazawan, and he will explain to you about uh, the full moon is not the new, new moon. So please share this video with your friends and be blessed. Now, this is important because our feast days are determined by the moon. So we have to know what the new moon is in order for us to keep our feast days correctly. This is not going to be a long video because it's very easy to prove that the full moon is not the new moon. So let's start at Psalms 81 and 3. It says, Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. In the time appointed on our solemn feast day. Now, when we look at this verse in the English, we don't see the fullness of what it's actually saying. Here you see the verse broken down in English and Hebrew. 
Notice that the words time appointed is translated from the Hebrew word kasa'a. Now, when we click on this word kasa'a, we see that it's a reference to the full moon. So now we know that the words time appointed in Psalms 81 and 3 is a reference to the full moon. So let's read the verse again. Psalms 81 and 3, it says, Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed, or during the full moon, it says, on our solemn feast day. So now we have the new moon and the full moon in the same verse. Since the word and is not placed in between the words new moon and full moon, many people believe that the new moon in this verse is a reference to the full moon. So they read the verse like this. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the full moon, on our solemn feast day. Again, they believe that the new moon is actually a reference to the full moon. However, we're going to see that that is not the case. I'm going to show you that the words new moon in this verse should be translated new month. And that makes a big difference. But I'll get to that in a second. One thing we know for sure is that this verse is talking about the full moon. We were told to blow a trumpet on this particular full moon. Verse 4, it says, For this was a statute for Israel, and a law of the Most High of Jacob. So the Most High gave us a law to do this. Now, when did he tell us to do this? Watch this, verse 5. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony, here it is, when he, Israel, went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. So this is talking about the Egyptian captivity when the Most High delivered us out of Egypt. Verse 6, it says, I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Now, when did the Most High remove the burden from Israel's shoulders? He did that when he took us out of the Egyptian captivity. So when Israel was delivered out of Egypt, the Most High ordained for Israel to blow a trumpet. And we know from verse 3 that it was a full moon. In other words, the Most High delivered Israel out of Egypt during a full moon. He told us to blow a trumpet during this particular full moon to commemorate the day that he brought us out of Egypt. Now, this is how we're going to prove that the full moon is not the new moon. Let's go to Numbers 33 and 1. It says, These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. So now we're reading about Israel leaving out of the Egyptian captivity. Verse 2, it says, And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of Yahweh. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. Now, watch this. Verse 3, it says, And they departed from Ramesses, they left out of Egypt, it says, in the first month. Watch this. On the 15th day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. So we see that Israel left out of Egypt in the first month, on the 15th day of the month. Now, Psalms 81 and 3 said it was a full moon when they left out of Egypt. Therefore, we know that the 15th day of the month was a full moon. So, how can the full moon be the same thing as a new moon when we know that the new moon is always the first day of the month? Let's prove it. This is 1 Samuel chapter 20 and verse 24. It says, so David hid himself in the field. Watch this. And when the new moon was come, 
the king sat him down to eat meat, meaning King Saul sat down to eat meat. Verse 25, it says, And the king sat upon his seat as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Verse 26, Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something had befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. So David didn't show up to eat on new moon day. Now watch this. Verse 27. And it came to pass on the morrow. This is the day after new moon day. It says. Which was the second day of the month. That David's place was empty. So here we see that the day after new moon day was the second day of the month, which means that New Moon Day was the first day of the month. New Moon Day is always day one of a biblical month, but the full moon is the 15th day of the month. Israel left out of Egypt during a full moon on the 15th day. That proves that the full moon and the new moon are not the same thing. It's impossible. Let's go back to Numbers 33 and 3 and read it again. It says, And they, Israel, departed from Ramesses. They left out of Egypt. It says, In the first month, here it is, on the 15th day of the first month. Watch this. On the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. So we see that we left Egypt on the 15th day of the month on the morrow after the Passover. We know that the 15th day of the month on the morrow after the Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Let's prove it. This is Leviticus 23 and 5. It says, In the 14th day of the first month, this is the same month we left out of Egypt, the first month, it says, At even, or evening, is Yahweh's Passover. Watch this, verse 6. It says, And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto Yahweh. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. This is important because this shows us that Moses wasn't referring to the 15th day of some Egyptian calendar. He was talking about the same 15th day that we're reading about here in Leviticus. So Israel left out of Egypt on the 15th day of the month during the new moon on the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Let's go back to Psalms 81 and 3. It says, Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. Now, we just proved that the new moon and the full moon is not the same thing. The new moon is day one. The full moon is day 15. So why does Psalms 81 and 3 say, blow up the trumpet in the new moon? Well, as you can see, the words new moon is translated from the Hebrew word kadash. Let's look it up. When we click on the word kadash, H2320, we see that it says the new moon, but it also says month, monthly. In other words, the Hebrew word Kadash can refer to a new moon as in new moon day, but it can also refer to a new month. Which one is Psalms 81 and 3 talking about? Is it talking about new moon day or a new month? It can't be talking about new moon day because Israel left Egypt in the time appointed, which was the 15th day of the month. Therefore, it has to be talking about the start of a new month. In other words, Numbers 33 and 3 says, we departed out of Egypt in the first month. Remember, new moon in the Hebrew is Kadash, which can also be translated as New month. We came out of Egypt in the first month, which is the newest month in the yearly cycle. 
That's why the Most High told us to count that month as the beginning of months. So we blew the trumpet in the new month, meaning the first month during the full moon to commemorate our deliverance from Egypt. 